Hey everybody, it's Ben here. Today I want to talk about solar. I want to go over what I've actually chosen for my solar photovoltaic system and why. I hope you can hear me okay. It's pretty windy outside and the construction plastic is kind of flapping around. Uh, in front of me we have one of the solar panels I'm going to be using. I actually have two of these solar panels and I bought them because I wanted to physically have at least one solar panel uh, just to test out, you know, to be able to uh, see how it works with my racking system and a couple of other things uh, before I actually make the big purchase. So what I'm going to be doing is have a 6,000 watt system that's going to be 24 260 watt panels. Each one's going to have a 250 watt microinverter on it so that 250 watts uh, times 24 gives us the 6,000 watts faceplate value. Uh, I'm going to be looking at doing a eight solar panel wide by three solar panel tall array to get that 24 panels. The solar panels are Helios brand. They are the 6T series. These are 260 watts. Uh, these were made in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Now, unfortunately, that company is out of business, but there's still a lot of their panels out there that were manufactured and there's still new stock available for sale. Um, unfortunately, some people might not want to buy solar panels from a company that's now out of business, uh, which means I was able to get a little bit of a break on the price. So these are $150 each. Uh, the closest similar panel that I could otherwise purchase was about $180, and they can get uh, more expensive from there too for a little bit higher wattage solar panels. Uh, they are 39 inches wide and 66 inches long. Uh, they weigh about 50 pounds each. So what I'll do is I'll have one microinverter with each and every solar panel. So right at the solar panel, the power gets converted from about 30 volts DC to 240 volts AC, just right there. Then that gets connected to a trunk cable and that eventually runs down into the garage and feeds in through a 30 amp circuit breaker. So for the racking, I'm planning on using the iron ridge system. Basically, the racking is an aluminum extrusion that uh, mounts to the roof, and then the solar panels mount to the rack. Uh, part of why I want to use iron ridge's system is that they have a setup so that uh, the frame, the microinverter, and the racking are all electronic, uh, electrically bonded to each other. So for example, this UFO, their universal fastening object, can be used as a mid-clamp so you would have two solar panels on the roof. You would drop this between them. It would lock down into that rack and you tighten it down and then it will electrically bond the frame of the solar panel to that rack with kind of these little, little teeth that are in here. Now the microinverters, the M phase, like the M250, uh, the DC is floating. It's completely isolated from everything else. Uh, and then the AC grounding wire actually goes to the case of the microinverter and that is electrically bonded with the mid bolt and the frame and the racking uh, so that you don't need a separate big ugly uh, grounding cable, a heavy duty bare copper wire that would go to uh, all the pieces of racking and a, a grounding screw on each and every one of the solar panels. So it's a nice system because it kind of cuts your work in grounding in half. Uh, another kind of neat thing with the UFO is it's also able to be used as an end clamp, but since it would only be sitting on one solar panel instead of two, there's a spacer that also goes with it. Now, uh, you do have to get the correct length of spacer depending on what your solar panels are. These solar panels happen to be 40 millimeters thick, so I've got the 40 millimeter spacer. Uh, basically, this just snaps right onto the UFO, and then you put it in and tighten it down just like you do the mid clamps, except now it's an end clamp. So it's kind of neat because it takes care of the bonding. You don't need separate mid clamps and end clamps. Uh, it's a pretty slick system. And then of course there's also plastic clips that clip right onto the racking. Uh, so that takes care of uh, where all your wires go. The Iron Ridge system uh, has some other accessories and parts and components. For example, here is a splice. So this actually slides internal to the racking uh, and then it has a couple of uh, self-tapping metal screws that go into it. And again, this is all electrically bonded so that the grounding is taken care of for the system. Now to actually connect the racking to my standing seam metal roof, I'm going to be using an S5 clamp. These come in a couple of different varieties. Uh, there's the mini and there's the standard. 
Uh, the difference is the standard has two set screws on it. The Mini only has one. The Mini is typically what's used for solar systems, though. I made up a mock-up of my metal roof. And one thing I, I actually found out is I had two pieces of the, the metal. I snapped them together, and I put the, the clamp on there. And it kept tightening and tightening and tightening and not torquing down the way it was supposed to. And it took me a minute to realize that, of course, the metal is deforming when it's actually out on the roof and it's all screwed down. It stays in place much better and then the clamp is effective. So I made the sample with a, a scrap of the 5 eighths plywood that's the roof decking. I screwed down some of the sample pieces of metal and then put the S5 mini clamp on here and it works great. It torques, torques down really solid. In fact, I actually set this up on end, uh, stood on this clamp and then jumped up and down on it. So a 200 pound guy jumping up and down on this one single little clamp doesn't budge at all. It was really uh, pretty impressive how solidly these uh, connect on here. So I'll have these probably every four, maybe five feet on the roof and the racking will get bolted down. Um, the clamp itself is all aluminum and then all the hardware to go with it is all stainless steel. So the microinverters are pretty slick because those take care of converting the DC to AC and it's completely automatic in terms of synchronizing to the grid. Uh, frequency, voltage, everything like that's taken care of at the microinverter. However, I've got enough microinverters that it has to be two circuits, not just one. So I need a combiner box, something like a, a circuit breaker subpanel that would still be on the outside of the building to combine those circuits together. I also need an AC disconnect box, and that would be something so that uh, the utility worker or maybe a fire department, emergency personnel, if anybody needed to be able to turn the solar system off, they could with just a box on the side of the building with a big red ka-chunk handle to disconnect. Uh, I could have done that just with um, a couple of items from the regular big box store, but I did find that Midnight Solar makes a nice box that puts all those functions together in one box, so I'd only have one thing on the outside of the garage, which I'd, I'd much rather do it that way. So that's going to be the Midnight Solar PV6 AC Micro Combiner Disconnect. I've got that on order. I don't have it here yet. Um, I do have the breakers for it. So these are double pull, double throw, 20 amp circuit breakers. They're going to be inside the box. And then the actual red handle on the outside literally throws the actual circuit breakers themselves to disconnect power. Now from that disconnect box, power is going to come through uh, inside conduit, right through the wall of the garage, into my main breaker box, and then uh, that's going to come in through a 30 amp uh, double pull, double throw breaker. So my local power utility actually has a, a an application, a form a couple of pages long that I have to fill out. It's the PSC 6027 paperwork. It has a number of different requirements on there that I have to comply with to be able to uh, export my electricity to the grid from my solar panels. So I did just this past week turn in that paperwork. Um, a lot of it was just what the specs on the equipment I'm using is, including that they're ULS listed, um, you know, they meet all the NEC requirements for solar systems, things like that. So mostly that was uh, just printouts of PDF files from the equipment manufacturers. Um, I also needed to include with that a uh, single line diagram. Essentially that's a simplified electrical schematic uh, showing how the equipment is connected electrically, uh, what the wiring is, the gauge of the wiring, where the disconnect is, things like that. Uh, I was able to draw up a pretty nice looking uh, schematic using a web page called solardesigntool.com. They sell some software for solar designers, but they do also have a uh, little trial period. So basically you can try the software for a month free. So I thought, well, a month, that's plenty of time for designing just my one project. Uh, that was web-based, which is nice because I've got a Mac. Sometimes certain uh, pieces of software are only available for PC, not Mac. So having it web-based was really nice. Uh, and I was able to do up a nice schematic with that. Uh, the power utility also requires a, a site survey or a site diagram. Basically, they just want to see, um, for example, where is the, the main meter compared to the AC disconnect? Can you see the one from the other? Is it easily accessible? So for that, I basically just drew that up. Um, I cut and paste a little bit from Google Maps to show an overhead view of my property. And then I had an old plat of survey, um, basically a property line map, 
that I brought into Photoshop and I just kind of traced over to make the diagram and put in some text and arrows showing uh, where my meter is and where the disconnect box on the outside of the garage is going to go. Now, of course, before starting a solar project, a person really needs to know that it's going to meet their needs. So for me, it was pretty simple. I took a look at my electric bill for the past year. Um, I added up all the, the months in total. I uh, created an average out of it. And I knew I wanted to be able to make uh, as close as I could to net zero. I wanted to make as much electricity as I use. So since I knew how much I needed to make from my power bill, I could also then uh, take a look at some predictions using predictive software to see if I could make a similar amount of electricity from the, the solar panels. Great way to do that is with uh, PV Watts. PV Watts is some software available from the National Renewable Energy Labs. You can just go online, you punch in some information on uh, where you are, and it will pull up information on how long the days are based on your, your latitude and longitude, um, how many cloudy days per year you have at your location, things like that. And it comes up with a fairly accurate estimate of how much power that you'll, you'll produce. And in my case, a 6,000 watt system averaged out over the year should produce roughly the same amount of electricity that I actually use right now. So I should be able to come up with more or less a net zero uh, solar system. So let's talk incentives for a minute. At this point right now, uh, February 2017, uh, the US federal government does have a 30% federal tax incentive for renewable energy systems. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, basically, you install something like solar panels and 30% uh, of the total cost of doing that will essentially become a credit on your federal taxes. So in my case, that should be around $3,000. Now, I paid more in taxes last year than $3,000, so it should work out well for me that essentially on my taxes, I'm going to save that much money or another way to look at it is instead of paying $3,000 in taxes, I'm doing something good for society by setting up solar panels and reducing how much electricity needs to be made from sources like coal. So now the air is cleaner for everybody. So you can look at it as getting a tax break. You can look at it as doing your fair share in taxes by doing something good. Uh, either way, uh, it's a great way to encourage people to put up renewable energy. Now, depending on where you live, you may or may not have local incentives available through your state, your town, your city, or your power utility. Now, unfortunately, in the state of Wisconsin, we have zero tax incentives for solar. We just, there, there's nothing. There's really nothing through the state. There is, however, a program through the power utilities called Focus on Energy. And that money comes from a very small percent of the profits of power utilities. And that money has to be reinvested into uh, energy efficiency, conservation, and renewable energy. So you might be able to go to the hardware store and uh, previously compact fluorescent bulbs and now LED bulbs, you could commonly get at a pretty good discount and that would be provided through this funding through the power utilities. In my area, it's this program called Focus on Energy. Now, Focus on Energy, in previous years, uh, they would give you a check based on uh, how much solar energy you installed. You would get a certain amount of money for, say, five or 6,000 watts of installed power. Now, this year, they changed it, where you instead get 12% of however much money you spent on it. Now, that means if I had put up the solar panels last year, I would have gotten $2,400 as a check from the power utilities to do my system. Instead, this year, I would only get $1,200. So right there, that's kind of a significant change. Still, I'm happy to get any kind of a, a incentive that I can. The other thing is that the focus on energy incentive uh, actually has a lot more um, little footnotes and fine print than the federal tax incentive does. Uh, a few odd things, for example, is it must be grid tied, which does make sense because it's an incentive from the power utilities. So, I mean, you should be a customer of them if you're gonna be getting money from them. Fair enough, and it's a grid tie system anyways, so I wasn't concerned about that. But if you want to uh, start your own off-grid solar shack up in the middle of nowhere, keep in mind that in the state of Wisconsin, you'll get that 30% from the federal government, but you would not get that 12% from the focus on energy. 
Now, the other thing is it's pretty likely that next year there will be no money from Focus on Energy. Now, on the other hand, two years ago, I started researching exactly how I want to do that, this project. And two years ago, the same system cost about $12,000. That would cost $10,000 today. So just because of mass manufacturing and how solar has come down in cost, that has actually come down more than what the tax incentive was, essentially. So I, I want to get money if there's some money out there, but at the same time, I'd love it if people would just buy and set up solar because it's the right thing to do, and it's not overly expensive anyway. So I kind of have mixed feelings in the drops in prices and the reduction of incentives, but in the end, it just means that solar has kept on coming down and coming down. So in a nutshell, the cost of the system is going to be right around $10,000, but I'll be able to take off 30% of that from that federal tax credit, and then I'll be able to take off another uh, up to $1,200 from that for my local incentives through the power utilities. So basically, that's going to bring the cost of a $10,000 system down to under $6,000. So right there, significant savings. Uh, and then the other thing to keep in mind is, well, how much money am I gonna save on my electric bill? In general, uh, this works out to about $1,000 a year in electricity. So if this is a $6,000 system, it's gonna pay for itself on a simple economic return on investment in about six years. That sounds pretty good. That's, that's, a, that's a fairly good return on investment right there. Uh, but better than that is I also took a look at the numbers if you drive an electric car and you make your own electricity, instead of buying gasoline and figure that in, it further drops that economic return on investment down to about three and a half years. And I really can't think of anything out there where you can say, here's $10,000, three and a half years from now, give me double that. There's nothing else quite like that. The other thing to keep in mind is that this is not about uh, financial incentives. I really want solar because I think it's the best way to produce energy and I like to be able to do something for myself. If I can produce my own energy, if I can grow my own food, if I can fix my own car, those are all good things. Uh, it's something I don't have to pay somebody else to do. I learn how to do it myself. And in the case of renewable energy, it also means we're not digging up coal and burning it and putting CO2 in the air. Uh, a nuclear power plants are very interesting. I have mixed feelings on them. They don't produce any CO2. That's a great thing, and we should consider the benefits of that right now. But we still don't have a great solution to long-term uh, storage of nuclear power, uh, or the, the, the nuclear waste created from the nuclear power. Um, whereas right now, I can just make my own electricity really easy, put these up on the roof, connect them to the grid, and I'm making my own power. Pretty excited about that. So at this point right now, I'm waiting to hear back from the power utility because I gave them all my paperwork. Uh, I'm hoping for a straightforward approval process. Uh, probably at, at the worst, they might have a question about the, the grounding system used between the N-phase solar panels and the Iron Ridge racking, the framework and everything else. Um, but I, I don't expect there to be any issues. I'm also waiting to hear back from the building inspector too, just to see exactly what he wants to have in terms of electrical inspection for the system. And then for the actual final hookup of the system, I'm gonna have my electrician do that, just so we have an official electrician signing off on the paperwork, which is also a requirement for the local incentive. But really all I have to do is just pay the guy to literally hook up those last two wires, make sure it's a good connection and that he's happy with how everything's wired up. Uh, the trunk cabling and everything else um, makes this AC wiring really, really simple. So that's about it right now. Uh, also take a look in the description of this video and the link to the blog for other information about my solar system. And until next time, stay charged up.